All right, welcome back to another video. Today we'll be installing a automatic transfer switch uh, in the generator on our Class C motorhome. This will be applicable to any motorhome that has an onboard generator. Okay, well, let me explain the situation. So our RV has obviously a power cord, comes out of here, you plug it into shore power. Also have an onboard Onan 4000 watt micro light generator here. The way it works now is when the generator is on, it sends power to this outlet right here. So you have to plug the shore power cord into this outlet to run off of the onboard generator. While that works, it'd be a lot more convenient, even if you're just at a campground and the power goes out and you wanna turn on your generator. Instead of having to come out, unplug it, plug it in like this, uh, they make an automatic transfer switch. This is a pretty simple one and relatively inexpensive and as always I'll have a link below in the description where you can buy the same transfer switch. But if we look inside it's just a series of contactors and a circuit board. How this works is we will mount this in the place in here to replace this and we'll have the generator output directly wired into the RV's power system. So whenever you're on shore power it will just run off of shore power. When you start the generator, it will let the generator warm up for approximately 30 seconds and then automatically transfer to, gener to generator power. When you shut the generator down, it will immediately switch back to shore power. It will always give the generator 30 to 40 seconds to warm up before it transfers the load. So that's really all this does. And it's a very simple wiring connection. You see they have it labeled bring our shore power line into the top of here, connect it to these terminals here. We'll bring our generator power line into the top, connect to these two terminals here. This is for your ground line. Yeah, obviously you got a uh, neutral bus and a hot bus. And then the output, you can connect it either to this side or this side. That is what will go to the power distribution center for the RV. So it sounds simple enough. The key is on your RV, finding the spot where you have all these wiring together. So obviously the spot where my shore power cord comes in here and the spot where my generator power meets up. There's two separate electrical boxes in here. To me, this seems like a pretty good spot. And at the same time, I'm gonna go ahead and replace my shore power cord. All right, so something to keep an eye on. If we look closely, you can see they're starting to melt around the terminal on the shore power cord. And the reason for that is when you use these a lot over time, you notice that these will become loose. So if you can wobble these terminals with your finger, they've worked themselves loose. And when they do that, they start to uh, break away from the wire inside of the cord head here. That less wire, less contact means higher resistance. Resistance causes heat and heat will, could cause a fire, it could overload the plug. Uh, it actually, this blew the circuit breaker yesterday because it overheated and overloaded. That's how I knew there was a problem because I was running the air conditioner all day when it was hot. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace this cord at the same time, obviously since I'm doing this upgrade. All right, so obviously we wanna make sure all our power's off, make sure there's no way the generator can turn on, make sure you're unplugged from shore power, we know all power is off. We can start digging in in here. So, so my plan is to remove this outlet box here. There's four screws to take the cover plate off. Uh, there's another box behind it, which is where the shore power cord goes in. I'll take the cover off of that. And then we can see where we're at here. <clears throat> all right, we've got very limited room to work in here.
there's that generator outlet. So this is our wiring coming from the generator here. What I'm gonna do is just, I'm re completely removing both of these. So I will just take a flathead and a hammer and knock that ring loose. Could spin that completely off and get this box out of the way. There's some Phillips head screws in there, back of the box. Then I'll do the same thing to the next box over there. This is just where our shore power ties into a 10 gauge wire that runs to the electric panel. Alright, so we've got our generator power, house power, shore power cable. There was a board that was mounted to the wall in there, that's hard to see, that I took out. I'm just going to mount this in here straight up and down. Then into the top I can run the shore power line and the generator line and then coming out of the bottom the line going to the house I should have enough room to get that all in there. It's going to be a little tight. Everything's going to be a little tight. But I'm going to try to get that wired up. So we just got to go ahead and knock out the little knockouts. And we'll get our lines fed through where they need to be. And get everything wired up. We can kind of get everything wired out here where we have a little room and then tuck it in and screw it into place. So right now I'm wiring in the generator line, connecting the ground. I'm gonna put crimp terminals on these since it's strained of wire. I didn't like how they were tightening down in there. Gotta make sure it's a good connection. If you have any kind of a loose connection, that usually causes resistance. Resistance causes heat. Any fires or overheating to take place in here. Now we need to make our new shore cable. So the easiest way to do is just to buy an extension cord. So I got to cut the end off of that. All right. So the shore line is going to come in the top here, using the existing connection. That one fits in this knockout. Uh, this line here didn't fit in the knockout, so I just drilled a new 7 8 inch hole right behind it. And same thing on the bottom, I had to drill a 7 8 inch hole because the knockouts were too big. And so I got the wire fit in, tightening it down. And I think I'm going to do the same thing with these, use spade terminals, make good connections. Alright, so we've got the shore power line and generator line wired in. Now the last thing you need to do is connect the wire that runs to the circuit panel. It's going to come in the bottom right here. Your ground, neutral and hot, you can connect it to either side, like I said, they're both tied together. Alright, so I've made all my connections. So you can see where the generator line comes in up here. The shore power line comes in up here. Here's my output, it's wired in here. I think all the grounds are tied together there in the ground bus. Before I actually turn this thing into place and screw it down, I'm just going to make sure everything works. So the first thing I will do is connect to shore power, make sure we have power in the RV, and then I'll start up the generator and we'll come over here and we'll listen for the click. Hopefully we can hear it with the generator running. All right, so I just heard it click when I plugged in the shore power. Now I'll go ahead and start the generator out here. I've got the air conditioner running inside the RV.
think I flooded it. Wait 30 seconds, and you should hear this a pretty loud click. There was the click, now we are on generator power. All right, so now I'm gonna shut down the generator, and we'll switch back over. You'll hear the click back over to shore power. Instantly clicked over. All right, now I can go ahead and get the cover on and get it mounted in place where I want it. Seems to be working good. All right, so that's all there is to it. Everything's put back together. It's neatly contained in there. You may be installing that behind your electrical panel inside. That's a common place if, if your generator and everything comes together there. Or maybe you're just replacing a faulty transfer switch. I know some other homes come with them when you buy them, but this one did not. So it's an easy upgrade. Just make a little bit, life a little bit easier for around sixty dollars. Be sure to like the video if it helped you out. Subscribe for more. Leave a comment if you have a question or would just like to leave a comment. And as always, there's links in the description where you can buy this transfer switch. Till next time, we'll see you later.